Hey everybody, and welcome to the Bird Tricks Parrot Training Podcast. I'm Dave Womack, and this is my wife, Jamie Womack, and together we have more than 35 years of parrot training expertise. Our goal with this is to inspire you to become a better parrot trainer and ultimately, possibly, a better person too through learning some of these things that we're going to try to coach you through. Uh, although you may be seeing this in video format on YouTube, ultimately this is intended to be a podcast and since this is our first one, we will be giving you more information on how to find that, that information in those podcasts. But uh, without any further ado, I want to dive right into today's topic. And it's something that we get a lot throughout our private consultations. We've been getting this so much lately. And um, I have my reasons for why I think it's coming up. But basically, it's the concept of your bird getting too much freedom. And it came about because most people want to do the best by their bird and there's kind of this big movement this big push away from keeping your bird in the bird's cage and what's happening is because the bird is getting so much out of the cage time it's becoming unruly it's destroying stuff and it's causing a lot of problems not just physical problems to the house to its environment but emotional problems behavioral problems getting the bird back into the cage problems getting bit attacking people and here's the other really interesting thing about this. Too much freedom doesn't mean that you should leave your... But basically what I'm trying to say is we've seen this happen inside as well as outside. So we're going to dive into a couple examples of what that looks like and some different ways to solve those problems. Yeah, and I think the main part of this concept and why it's driving kind of a wedge between human and parrot is because for some reason, whatever people are influenced by, they're starting to associate a bird's cage as a negative thing. It's almost like this dungeon, this horrible place to keep your bird. And instead of being an enriching environment that's looked at as a place where the bird should actually enjoy being just as your child would enjoy being in their room where they have all their toys, they can even have alone time or downtime to kind of decompress and not have to be social. Um, I say that as an only child, so I totally <laughs> understand that concept. Um, but I think, you know, we have to really break the misconception of feeling that way about the cage because when we do feel that way and we feel that way deeply to the point of feeling guilty every time we put our bird inside their cage, we project that emotion onto our birds and we're basically telling them in a way that your, your cage is a bad place for you to be. And we're almost using it as a timeout or as a disciplinary place, which is not how the cage should be used. Yeah. It should be a form of enrichment. It should be a place that your bird does feel safe and enjoys being in just as much as it enjoys coming out and interacting with you. You know, I know that one of the things that we experience with free flight is we'll be out flying our birds all day and they literally put themselves away to communicate to us like, hey, I'm done. I'm tired yeah. for the day. Um, I know that even my daughter, like not just to draw, you know, uh, back to the human aspect of it, even our daughter, she will be playing with, with the neighbor kids for a while and then just want to come home and be alone for a bit. You know, she'll even come up to us during a play date and say like, hey, mom, dad, I just kind of want to be alone for a little bit. Um, and I think we've all felt that way and we need a space to escape to, to do that. So um, overall, I just want to paint the picture of like, if you feel really guilty about putting your bird in its cage, maybe your cage just really sucks that bad. <laughs> maybe it's awful, yeah. you know, maybe it's too tiny and that's something that you're aware of, or maybe you don't have it decked out with toys or, or however it's lacking, definitely fix that. Um, because I don't want you guys to get the misconception that it's okay to leave your bird in the cage all day, every day, and not interact with it. That's not where we're going. But there needs to be a balance. And with training, and I think every time we talk about any concept of training, it comes back to a healthy balance. There is a balance to be had with all of these things. So there's an amount of time that's really great to have out, and there's an amount of time that's really great to have in. And those don't have to be consistently the same every day. So Jamie brought up some interesting points. You want to make sure that the cage is one of the keywords, an enriching environment. Now that environment should include foraging toys. It should in include shreddable toys. It should include things that are mentally and physically engaging your parrot. You know, we've talked a lot about when you're trying to get a, a really overweight parrot to start to exercise, she'll make it difficult to get from the water dish to the food dish and not difficult to the point the bird can't do it. But hard More enough annoying. to, yeah, and, and keep in mind, you know, we say this all the time in our, in our lectures, our classes, everything, 
that we've produced is that in the wild, birds have to work all day. They're flying around foraging in the hopes of maybe finding food and water. There's no promise, there's no guarantee. So when we take these birds, we put them in captivity, we dumb them down by giving them a 24 hour buffet. And obviously you do want to keep 24 hours of water in there, but we, we make their lives too simple. These animals are wired, they're hardwired. It's instinctive for your bird to want to go work for food. So despite whatever feelings you may have that, oh, I don't want him to have to work for it, that's wrong. The reality is that your bird wants to work for its food. We were talking today with some people, you know, there's been studies out there when animals in a control group and um, in a study group were given two different options to either work for food or receive food for doing nothing, the majority of the animals preferred to work for their food. And so by just giving a 24 hour access to food, you're not doing a lot of good. So make it slightly challenging where they have to think about it. They have to physically move. And if you can engage their mind and their muscles to make it so they can work for their food in their cage, they're going to start to look forward to going into their cage. So what we do to enrich our parrots when they're out of the cage is we have flight training. We have bond building games or formal training sessions. We also just have time where they can hang out on a tea stand next to us. Now, that's some of the, the positive side of the birds being out of the cage. Um, I also wanna share the other side of a bird being in a cage. You don't know what your lifestyle is going to be for the rest of your life. Um, unfortunately, that's not something any of us can really predict. Uh, we can all hope for one scenario or the other, but keep in mind, it's not just your lifestyle, it's the bird's lifestyle. If something happens and you have to give up your bird and that bird goes to somebody else, that person is more than likely going to want to cage that bird for a certain amount of time. So if you are always having your bird out of the cage and it never goes in the cage, now all of a sudden the cage is going to be that torturous dungeon that it doesn't belong in and it's going to cause a lot of issues down the road. Or for example, if you have to go away or want to go away for a week or a weekend on a vacation, your bird needs to be able to view that cage as not a dungeon, not as a punishment. You know, uh, I remember my parents saying, you know, at certain points, my mom would get fed up with me. She's like, David, Paul, Womack, go to your room. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I liked my room, right? And that's the same feeling your bird should have. They should look forward to the enrichment, engaging activities in their cage, just as much as they should look forward to the enriching, fun, mentally and physically stimulating and challenging environment that you provide outside of the cage. And one of the things that I actually got flack for online for, on our YouTube channel was when I did my process with Morgan, my whole thing was giving her the tools that she needed to be a more confident, more adaptable, capable bird. And the way that I did that was not treating her as though she was a handicapped bird, even though she was, because she was fully capable. And I knew that, but I had to teach her that about herself. And so I did make things difficult. When she got stuck places, I made her troubleshoot, problem solve, and figure it out. I didn't just make it easy for her. And you know, a lot of people felt really bad for her because of her handicap and wanted me to just reach out, give her a hand and make it easy. But that really was not doing her any favors. And I think that's what we all have to remember as companions and keepers of these birds is making it easy is not doing your bird any favors in the long run. You have to always remember that, that this we're in this for such a long haul that you have to think yeah. long term instead of short term. So, um, and that can be difficult for people to do because a lot of us live in the moment, in the present, right here, right now. How can I get over this right here, right now in the shortest amount of time? But you have to think through things about how they have long-term effects, um, whether those are good or bad, and then think about the process that you're gonna go through to get there, to get to the best result. So let's talk about some of the downsides of keeping your bird outside a cage too much, giving too much freedom, you know? Uh, gosh, I mean, the list is so long, but a cockatiel that's out all the time is going to start to chew on things. It's going to start to make your house its nest. It's going to find areas in the house that'll become territorial. Uh, it'll and, and this happened with a friend of ours. She had the cockatiel out all the time. The bird was creating this environment within its house that wasn't really and not ideal. in one spot. Yeah, 
So she was laying eggs in multiple areas and then getting possessive. And you would just walk up one day, go to grab a bowl off the cupboard and realize, oh, she made her nest there. I had no idea because it was behind the bowl. Um, so now you're getting nesting behaviors and you can't really control that because now you're going to be redecorating your house based on the fact that that's a dark place. She could get in that. She could go in this. She could lay an egg there. Um, and that's no way to live, to be honest. Again, it comes back to having that balance of you want to let your bird out you want to enjoy your bird outside of its cage but you also want your bird to enjoy going back in um, just as much as it does enjoy coming out with you so with our birds that we never usually have a problem getting them to go in their cage or come out they're equally excited to do both because they never know what's going to happen and are we going to take them out and give them a bath are we going to take them out put them in a travel carrier and go on a long trip are we going to take them out go on a free flight trip go on a walk around up around the block the other day is what we surprised comment tusa with yeah um there's so many possibilities. Or are we gonna take them out, give them food out? Sometimes we give them food in their aviary, sometimes we give them out. There's no consistency with that, so they're always coming out with this, almost this headspace of, oh, I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's usually pretty awesome, so let's do this. And going back is equally as awesome because they have things to shred. You know, I noticed that I tend to put my birds back into their enclosures when I realize they want to break stuff <laughs> they, <laughs> they want to destroy something um and that eagerness and that anxiousness to destroy something i'm like okay i will give you plenty to destroy in your enclosure where you can make the biggest mess that you want because i don't want that in my home yeah so having your bird out too much in your house causes tons of problems so please don't make the mistake of believing that that caging the bird is bad it is just a false sense of reality that that people are, this rumor is being spread that the cage is bad and it's not. Now, here's the catch. Your cage has to be the pro appropriate size for your bird. Uh, you know, the larger, the better, right? I mean, yeah, your we cage have, should be awesome. <laughs> we have huge cages for our birds and, and there's no resistance going in or out. If there is resistance going in or out, set up yourself for success by only feeding dinner in the cage at night. So the bird's looking forward to going in the cage to get its meal. Or like Jamie said, if you're seeing signs that the bird want to be destructive, Put it in the cage where it can acceptably be destructive. When the bird is out all the time, it starts to become a wild bird that lives in your house. It becomes less of a pet and it, it becomes a massive source of problems. And I would say the biggest, the biggest downside to keeping your bird out of the cage for long, 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 long extended periods of time is when your interactions become less, hey, we're having fun, we're doing things together, and more of don't get into that, don't touch that, and now all you're doing is scolding, disciplining, uh, taking things away from your bird, getting in between what you and your what your bird wants. That's when you're going to see major behavioral issues because that's going to lead to aggression. Your bird is going to want to get into those things because they're right there, right in front of its face. And you're going to be pulling things away and saying no. And that's really where we get into a major problem. And that's going to cause more problems with you down the road and, and, and honestly, immediately too. If you look at our Family Friendly Parrot training course at familyfriendlyparrot.com, you get to see a lot of the understanding. You get, to, you get to comprehend really what the training quadrant is in English, right? So <clears throat> plus and minus reinforcement, plus and minus punishment, those all come into play. So if your bird is outside of the cage all the time, you are accidentally punishing it constantly, which is going to deteriorate your, your overall relationship. You really need to make sure that you're setting yourself up for reinforcement-based training as much as possible. And and for full understanding of what positive and negative or plus and minus reinforcement is, um, negative reinforcement does not mean bad reinforcement. It means minus, subtracting something that increases a behavior. And we explain all that in a family-friendly course. One of the recent examples, I'll let Jamie go into a little bit more, was with a client who had a military macaw that she was giving too much freedom to in the house. Now. Too much freedom kind of sets you up for a misleading conversation because the word freedom sounds like, hey, awesome, I love freedom, right? But it was too much freedom and it was causing a lot of these aggression and behavior issues. Yeah, and this was actually with a baby macaw. So it was a baby military macaw and what the client said to me was, well, she doesn't want to go back in the cage, so I don't want to make her. And especially with a baby macaw, you have to remember that you're setting up patterns and routines and a, a way of living life 
early on with that bird that's gonna stick with it. So it is way easier to just do things correctly and avoid getting in these situations than to break the habits. So one of the problems that she was having was this bird was at a natural fledging age, which is what we were going for. We were training this bird for outdoor free flight. So we wanted it to be flying and working on its skills, but it was going up to places and getting in trouble. And instead of their interactions being these awesome flight training sessions where they work on skills, they would do that for a bit and then the bird would lose, lose interest and go around and start to get into trouble. And I said, look, why are you keeping the bird outside of the cage so much? And the, the main reason was because the bird didn't want to go back. The second reason I believe was because they couldn't get the bird now because it was flying all over and it was yeah. now capable of staying away and ruining things around the house. Um, and not only is that just not great, you know, for your house, but also there's no way to 100% bird proof your home. So you really don't want to take the risk of your bird getting into stuff and destroying things that it, it shouldn't be doing and ingesting things it shouldn't have. So she actually did what we do and she set up a giant aviary in her garage where she's able to have her garage open all the time because she's in California so the weather is really accommodating. She also has a separate outdoor aviary and she was able to do to walk into these aviaries because they're large enough to be walk-ins and put the bird into this aviary just fine. It was able to fly in this aviary, burn energy, and then when she brought it into the house to do a formal training session, it was very focused. It was excited to spend time with her because the value of her and the value of the treats had gone up from not being out all day and having uh, letting the bird choose when she wanted to interact. So now she knew I got this window to, of opportunity to interact with my owner. I cannot wait. I'm going to do this. She was focused and she was happy to go into the indoor cage as well because she associated that almost like as a sleeper downtime cage. And so there was these separate associations of burn energy here in this aviary, get sunlight and stimulation outside in this aviary, get training and interaction and engagement with us indoors, and here's a sleeper calm down mellow out cage. And so there are all these different associations that now the communication was so clear that the bird was happy to do all of those things. And you were working within the natural um, instincts of the bird and what it wants to do at certain times a day. So to, to just kind of reiterate what she's saying, the cage can be such a happy place where your bird can do what it wants to do naturally, look for food, destroy stuff in a very safe, controlled environment. When you have your situation, your day set up so that you can utilize the cage to your advantage, not only does your bird look forward to going to the cage, it also is going to look forward to coming out to interact with you in formal training sessions or just to hang out on a tea stand with you. It's going to look forward to so many things. Now, finally, before we wrap this up, because we've only got a couple of minutes left, I want to also relay how too much freedom can screw up your bird outdoors. I would love to believe that most of you watching this or listening to this hope to someday take your bird outdoors or take part in our free flight programs or join us on a free flight trip and just kind of explore what that world looks like. I've seen parrots that had way too much freedom outside and it led to a lot of behavior problems too. Uh, the style of flying that I'm talking about is called at liberty flying and it's really cool and I, I love seeing it. But if you want your bird to be a, a companion pet parrot, at liberty flying kind of more or less means that your bird lives outside and it comes in and out for, for sleeping and for breakfast and dinner. Other than that, you get a lot less interaction with it on a daily basis even though you're giving it this outstanding life. So I'm not, I'm not criticizing that flying style by any means, but be aware that it comes with a price tag. And that price tag, one of those price tags, is that your bird is going to start to display aggression issues and stuff that normally wouldn't come up when you actually get to use the cage in a proper way. And again, that leads to, that's kind of what I was talking about with the military macaw, where the things got off balance yet again, where there was no treat value, there was no human interaction value either because the bird dictated how that went. And so outdoors, how that translates is the bird maybe starts full or gets full off the treats, the treats no longer have a value, being with you no longer has a value, and they go and they seek trouble. And this is what happens inside and outside. And when the bird goes and seeks trouble, 
they find it. And that's when your relationship takes a downhill turn because we've even flown with people like that and they're just spending all their time chasing their bird. Other people can't fly because their bird either chases other birds with aggression or is dive bombing people with aggression out of trying to find something interesting to do, which they've definitely found. And reversing that is, is quite the hurdle versus just never letting it happen in the first place. Well, guys, that wraps up today's bird tricks podcast. Now, uh, if you've got any value out of this or have enjoyed it whatsoever, please do us a huge favor. We're not asking for you to buy stuff from us. Uh, in fact, all we ask is that you just simply leave a comment on iTunes or here on YouTube, depending on where you're watching this. Uh, let us know. Give us that five-star review or a thumbs up, a like, a follow, uh, and subscribe to this so that you can hear more of this. We're going to be putting out podcasts weekly. Uh, if you have any questions also that you want us to answer on the podcast, just leave that in the comments. You can email us, info at birdtricks.com. Just put podcast in the uh, subject, and we'd be happy to answer as much as we can. Because after our, our goal here is to be able to save parrots one person at a time. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.